Every week we take time out to shine a spotlight on cases of missing black women and girls. They're cases that often get overlooked or ignored by other media, and in many cases, law enforcement. Now we can't help but think that the case we're covering tonight would have gone national if the people involved didn't look like us. 21-year-old Diamond Bynum and her nephew, two-year-old Kane Walker, have been missing since July of 2015. Family members believe Diamond may have taken the boy out for a walk. Now, Diamond has a genetic condition that led to slow mental development. And while there were some reported sightings of the pair initially, nothing was confirmed and they haven't been seen since. The details in this case, heartbreaking. Equally so, how family members say police treated them and this case. Joining me now tonight is LaShawn Walker. She's Diamond's mother and King's grandmother. Thank you so much for joining us. Our heart goes out to you, not one family member, but two. How is your family holding up? Um, it's, it's really a incredible ordeal to go through, especially for six years. It's been really, um, I don't know, traumatic. Um, it's really hard to even explain. I just, I'm just praying that, you know, that we get answers soon. Yeah, I know you, you're trying to be strong about this. And, and we want to hear more about your daughter, Diamond. What was going on in her life when she and your grandson disappeared? Um, she was staying with her dad and his wife, um, Michelle Bynum. Um, they had just moved to Gary, Indiana in February of 2015. Um, and, I, you know, she was going, she was in the Special Olympics. She was um, going to summer camp and um, she was um, um, learning to swim at the time before they went missing. And, um, but when they were with the stepmother, she fell asleep. And when she woke up, they both was gone. Just like that. Uh, well, Sean, tell us about the last time you saw Diamond and King. And, and I, I want to hear more about that day that they disappeared because it, it just, it just doesn't add up. And I, I'm sure you, you've probably been trying to piece this together yourself. Yeah, I've written a million scenarios in my head. What could have happened? Um, well, she I know she said they woke up that morning and um, ate breakfast, I guess, after Eugene went to work. And she bathed them both. And she lied, laid King down in the bed next to her. And she made a pallet for Diamond on the floor. And um, she said she dozed off, but then when she woke up, they both was gone. But um, the last time I saw her, it was maybe a week before that. And um, she seemed a little sad. And she called me maybe a couple days before they went missing and told me to call her. Um, and she just was just just she just sounded sad on the phone but um i didn't get a chance to talk to her before me before they went missing you kind of felt like something was wrong maybe yeah unfortunately i had a dream about it um that i was saving them and that's what startled me i had a dream maybe like a week before they were missing. That's when I said, I have to go see them both. And I went to see both of them. Um, um, I went to Chicago, which Ariana was living in. Um, um, I forget the name of the area, but she was living in Chicago and Diamond was living in mm -hmm. Kingman, um, in Gary. But um, that particular day, King was um, staying with diamond them for the day because ariana goes to cosmetology school so they babysit michelle babysits for her to go to school um so that's the reason why king was there wow you had a dream that is really something okay so what happened and you called the police and then what did they say um, they called the police and the police said they have to be missing for 24 hours for them to actually do an extensive 
search. And, um, but it was one particular officer, I guess, that took the call, but he was really on um, working on the, the streets. And I guess, meanwhile, if he run into them, then he'll probably pick them up or something. But um, when I came out to look for them, you know, I spoke with him and I was trying to flag a police officer down to let them know that they were missing if they seen him. And he said that he was the one that got the call or got the case or whatever. And, but he was pulling over a motorist. So he said he was the only officer working on the case at the time, which I didn't understand. We didn't get an Amber Alert for, for King because he was two years old. Um, but they said the reason you didn't why we get an, get an Amber alert. alert. Right. We didn't get an Amber Alert for him because they said he was with his auntie and she was 21 years old. And um, it wasn't known as, I mean, it wasn't said that they was kidnapped in a car. They had to be kidnapped or something in a car in order to get an Amber Alert. So they didn't have no... But you didn't know what to, happened. Uh, right. We, we don't know if they got in the car or not, but they had to have something to say that they were kidnapped in the car in order to get an Amber Alert. Okay, now we did so, reach out to Gary Indiana Police about this case. I want to let you know uh, they have not responded to us. Um, what have they told you, and when was the last time you spoke with them? Um, I spoke with them maybe like a couple weeks ago, and they got another um, detective on the case, um, which he said he would he would start the case over. I suggest that maybe they start the case from the very beginning and maybe question everyone all over again. And maybe they can, they, it's something somewhere, it's something they missed or something. Um, because the, um, they just, they, they, they just don't respond. I, I have, I've been trying to get in contact with them for months before this detective, particular detective got on a case. He just started maybe like a month ago, but they didn't even inform me that they had another detective working on a case. And the previous detective would never answer my calls. And every single time I try to call, his voicemail was always full or he's on, he was on vacation or he wasn't ever in the office or it was always something. And um, I spoke with his commander in chief. Um, I mean, I spoke with the chief and I also spoke with um, his boss was just the commander and he agreed to me with me to do a interview for diamond and king on the anniversary of it to do a um a conference but then the last minute i couldn't contact i couldn't reach him and I, so i called the mayor and the mayor said that it was last minute and he got upset with me because i was i was i was telling him i said i've been talking to him for the longest, this is this wasn't last minute. This was planned way ahead of time. So I don't understand I, why so he would get upset with me. I'm so sorry to hear that you are having. Yeah, that that shouldn't be happening. I'm so sorry to hear that you're having such trouble. We're going to continue to follow this, but thank yeah. you for joining us tonight, Lashawn Walker, mother of Diamond Bynum and grandmother of King Walker.